All right, I think we can uh, go and get started. So just a couple of uh, quick logistic, logistical uh, announcements. So the first problem set is going to go out uh, tomorrow, which is Wednesday, and then it's going to be due one week later, so the Wednesday after uh, at, uh, at midnight, and you'll submit it uh, through Gradescope. We'll have uh, instructions for, for how to do that. Um, the other announcement is Sasha is holding a Python tutorial uh, later today over Zoom. Uh, so this is not uh, mandatory, so you don't have to, to attend it. Uh, but the hope is that it'll get people up to speed with basic kind of Python syntax uh, and NumPy and, and SciPy and, and so on. Uh, so if you've seen some of that, uh, great. We'll post the, the recording uh, later on uh, on Canvas. If you haven't seen it, uh, feel free to attend it, and hopefully it's going to be uh, useful to you. Um, all right, and I guess that the final reminder is uh, to form teams by the end of the day tomorrow. So by the, the end of the day, Wednesday, uh, we're going to hand out the, the drones uh, in class at the end of uh, Thursday. Uh, so that will be used for the, the next uh, assignment. All right, so just to kind of remind you of, uh, of what we're doing, so the overall goal that we're building towards, uh, towards the final project, uh, is to get a drone to autonomously navigate through cluttered environments. Uh, purely based on, on vision. Uh, and we're slowly building up to that kind of ambitious goal. Um, and then the first goal uh, for the first four or so uh, lectures uh, is basically just to make the drone hover. Uh, so in some sense, this is the, the most basic thing uh, you would want from a drone, just hover in place. Uh, so that's, that's what we're, we're trying to uh, develop the, the techniques for. Uh, and the approach, the overall approach that we're taking to do this, uh, as I mentioned in the, the previous lecture, is kind of a, a two-part approach. Uh, so the first part is to think about the dynamics of our system. As how does the, the drone move uh, if you apply different control inputs, so different propeller commands, uh, how does that affect the drone's motion? And then the, the second part is to think about feedback control. Uh, so in the last lecture, we started tackling the, the first part, so the, the dynamics part. Uh, and specifically, we wrote down the equations of motion for the planar quad rotor. So this was the, the simplified uh, model of a quad rotor that, that we had uh, that's just allowed to, to move in some plane. Uh, so it's a three degree of freedom system, so x and y corresponding to the center of mass location, and theta, uh, which is the, the orientation. Uh, and then finally, towards the, the end of the, the lecture, uh, in the previous lecture, uh, we started Lights up. We started uh, thinking about the uh, 3D quad rotor dynamics. <coughs> so for the, the planar quad rotor, we wrote down the full equations of motion. Uh, the 3D quad rotor, we kind of just set up uh, the scene for today's lecture, uh, and we just said what the state vector is and what the control input vector is. Uh, so I'll remind you of that, and then we'll write down the, the full uh, equations of motion for the quad rotor. Uh, and then we'll start uh, talking about feedback control uh, at the end of the, the lecture uh, today. All right, so for the 3D quad rotor, so this is a lecture, uh, reminder rather from a uh, last lecture. Um, we wrote down what the state uh, vector is, is going to be. Uh, so the state is a, is a 12 dimensional uh, vector. Uh, and specifically, it corresponds to the x, y, z uh, location of the, the center of mass of the, the drone. Um, three angles, which we're going to call phi, theta, and psi. Uh, these are the Euler angles, uh, which we discussed in the, the previous lecture. Uh, and again, I'll just remind you that there are multiple conventions one could follow for the Euler angles. Uh, here, we're just going to use the space uh, one, two, three uh, convention that I introduced in the, the previous lecture. Um, and then we have x dot, y dot, and z dot. Uh, so th this is the, the velocity 
of the, the center of mass. Uh, so XYZ is the COM center of mass position of the drone. Right, and finally, uh, we have three uh, additional components, uh, which essentially correspond to the, the body rates. Uh, so we could choose uh, to use phi dot, theta dot, psi dot, the time derivatives of the order angles. Uh, it turns out it's slightly more convenient in terms of the compactness of the equations that we end up with uh, to work with uh, PQR, which, are, which correspond to the angular uh, velocity uh, vector, uh, and specifically expressed in the body frame. Uh, so if you've seen the angular velocity, uh, I guess it's specifically for an MAE major, uh, then that's good. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, one way to think about it, just kind of loosely, uh, is that it tells you something about the uh, rate of uh, change of the orientation of the drone. Uh, more specifically, uh, so this is some, some vector, it has three components. The direction of that vector, uh, corresponds to the, the axis uh, instantaneously about which the drone is rotating, uh, and the magnitude of the vector uh, tells you the, the rate of rotation. So that's kind of the, the physical uh, interpretation. Uh, but yeah, I guess you don't have to worry too much about the, uh, the specific like, interpretation. This is just uh, the choice that we're going to make uh, for our state uh, vector. Uh, the control input vector Again, there are a couple of options uh, that we have over here. Uh, so we could just treat the propeller uh, commands, the, the speeds of the, the propellers or the thrust produced by each propeller. Uh, we could cho choose those as our control inputs. Uh, again, just for the, the sake of kind of compactness of the equations, uh, it turns out it's slightly more convenient to work with a, a different representation, uh, which is still a four-dimensional uh, vector. Uh, so F total is the total thrust uh, from the propellers. Uh, and M1, M2, M3, uh, these are the moments, the torques, uh, about Bx, uh, By, and B, Z, uh, which are the, the three axes that define the, the body frame. Uh, so again, just to, to remind you, maybe I'll draw a picture over here. Uh, so we said that we have our quad rotor. It looks kind of like this. Um, so there's some forward direction that's going to be marked on the, the physical uh, drone. Uh, so we're going to call that the X direction uh, of the, the body frame. Uh, left is going to be uh, by, that's the, the y direction. Uh, and then z is just uh, the cross product of those, so it's kind of uh, vertical. So just physically on the, the drone, uh, let's say this is the, the forward direction, so that's what we're calling bx. Uh, the direction to the left is by, and then z is just straight up. And this is a frame, uh, the body frame, uh, which we can denote by B uh, that's attached to the body and like moves with the body as it, uh, as it moves around. All right, I guess any questions on, uh, on this? This is kind of where we uh, left off in the, the previous lecture. Okay, so the other thing that we talked about in the, the last lecture uh, is a motor model. Uh, so if you remember, we said that the, the thing that we actually get to control is the speed of the propeller, the angular speed of the, the propeller. Uh, but the expression uh, that kind of enters the dynamics uh, has to do with the, the force that each propeller is producing. Uh, and there's a nice relationship between the, the angular speed of each propeller uh, and the thrust that gets produced by that uh, motor, by that propeller. Uh, so for the planar quad rotor, Uh, we introduced this kind of relationship 
that you can derive from uh, some basic uh, aerodynamics uh, but you can just take for granted and, and measure like empirically uh, which is that the force or the thrust produced by propeller I uh, equals some constant that we can call a kf uh, times uh, omega I squared uh, so this is the thrust from uh, propeller I uh, this constant uh, is called the thrust coefficient Uh, so this has to do with the, the geometry, for instance, the size of the, the propeller, uh, and omega i is the angular speed of uh, propeller i, uh, and then we're squaring that angular uh, speed, and this is for the four propellers, so i equals one, two, three, and, and four. Uh, right, so there's this nice kind of quadratic relationship, uh, so the thrust force, uh, square, uh, scales linearly with the square of the, the angular speed of each uh, propeller. Um, for the 3D setting, so this was just in the, the planar quadrotor setting. Uh, so we just have the, the two propellers. Um, in this case, I equals just one and two. Uh, for the 3D setting, uh, it's a little more uh, interesting. Uh, so we still have this. Um, for the, the three-dimensional quadrotor. Uh, so we still have this relationship uh, that the thrust force produced by a propeller I uh, scales linearly with the square of the angular speed of the, the propeller. Uh, but there's an additional effect, uh, which is a moment uh, that's get, that gets produced by the, the spinning of the, the propeller. Uh, so as the, the propeller uh, spins uh, because it's interacting with the air. Uh, you get a moment kind of in the, the opposite uh, direction. So it's a moment due to the uh, the aerodynamics. Uh, so just as a, a kind of sketch. Uh, so let's say this is just one propeller. Uh, so we have a thrust force uh, F i uh, that gets produced by the spinning of the propeller. So that's what the uh, keep, basically keeps the, the drone up. Uh, but there's also a, a moment. Uh, which I'm going to call mi arrow, so arrow for aerodynamic uh, drag. Um, the direction of the moment uh, is basically the bz direction, so that's the, uh, the direction that's coming straight kind of vertically uh, from the, uh, the drone's uh, uh, body. Um, so there's a, a kind of nice relationship again between the moment, the, the torque, uh, this aerodynamic uh, drag uh, moment, and the uh, angular speed of the propeller. Uh, so it looks very much like the relationship for the thrust force, uh, but just with a different uh, proportionality constant. Uh, so this constant is called the moment coefficient. And again, the, the specific value of the, uh, the moment coefficient just depends on the, the geometry of the propeller. Um, so the, the pitch kind of angle of the, the blades, the, the size of the blades, and so on. Uh, but if you fix the, the propeller geometry, uh, then that fixes uh, these two uh, coefficients, the thrust coefficient and the, the moment uh, coefficient. Um, and the reason this is important, the reason that the moment coefficient is, is important, uh, is because this is what allows the quad rotor to turn in place. To, to basically change its, uh, its yaw. Uh, so let me try to, to just illustrate. So just imagine that the drone is facing this way. Uh, all you want it to do is turn this way, uh, just in, purely in place. Um, so the, the moment uh, coefficient, or the, the moment uh, force, the aerodynamic moment force, uh, is, is what uh, allows the, the drone to, to do that. So I guess can someone, yeah, question. Just label the uh, yes, um, on, on this picture here. Uh, well, I mean, there's only one that really matters. I guess it's the, uh, this is the, the BZ direction. Uh, BX and BY, um, those are fixed to the body of the drone. 
Uh, so they don't spin with the propeller. Uh, does that make sense? So the perpendicular direction uh, of the, the propellers is always aligned with the perpendicular of the, uh, um, like perpendicular to the, the drone, right? So this is the, the BZ direction. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Um, yeah, uh, another question. So if you were to just have like a single, like a rotor, yeah. single rotor drone, yep. like a helicopter, yeah. then like, I guess supposedly like, Circles, yes. Like, if it is like going out. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, I guess helicopters don't have a, a single loader, right? So they have a, another one. So they have the, one to counteract. Yeah. 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 So let's let's think about uh, this kind of yawing motion. So I guess can someone figure out how you would make the uh, the quad rotor uh, yaw in place uh, using this kind of aerodynamic uh, moment effect? Go ahead. Yes, okay, good. Um, so from a kind of top-down view, uh, maybe let me uh, draw it over here. Yeah. So if you look at a, a top-down, um, actually, is this portion of the board still visible to people in the front? Yes, kind of. All right. um, yeah, so if you look at, look at the, the drone from a top-down view, um, so if you get uh, propellers to, to spin, uh, in opposite direction. So this one spins clockwise, let's say. Uh, this one spins uh, anti-clockwise. Uh, this one spins anti-clockwise. Uh, this one spins uh, clockwise. Uh, so adjacent motors, so if you look at any two adjacent, uh, like pair of motors, uh, those are spinning in, in opposite directions. Uh, and if you change uh, how quickly, let's say the clockwise ones, so these are both clockwise, they're opposite, uh, if the clockwise ones are spinning faster uh, than the, uh, the anti-clockwise ones, uh, then you're going to get a motion in the clockwise uh, like direction, right? Um, what I'm drawing here, you can think of as corresponding to the, the moments, like the aerodynamic uh, drag moments. Um, but I guess there's a kind of interesting uh, question here, which is, um, how does the drone uh, just stay aloft, right? So you might think, OK, these propellers, are moving in the clockwise direction. Uh, this propeller is moving in the anti-clockwise direction. So maybe the thrust force is going to be opposite, right? So it's going to cause the, the drone to try to go down. Uh, so I guess can someone maybe provide an explanation for why that doesn't happen, or how you can fix that potential issue? Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So if you if you look at the uh, the pitch, so it's called the, the pitch of the blades, so the, the angle of the blades, uh, they're basically in opposite directions. Uh, so these propellers are always producing thrust kind of in the correct direction. Uh, so it's not like it's, uh, it's like pulling the, the drone in the, the opposite direction, uh, and that's happening because the, the angle of the blade, the geometry of the blade, is flipped. Um, and that's something that, that you should look. So when we hand out the, the drones on Thursday, uh, you should take a look at adjacent uh, propellers uh, and see that this is the case. Uh, and also, when you're doing the labs, uh, sometimes the propellers will break. Uh, so we'll give you some spare parts, so you'll have to put the propellers on. Uh, so this is super important. If you don't put the propellers on in the correct orientations, your drone is just going like, to flip and do something like totally weird. Right? So if you see that happening, uh, double check that the propellers are on uh, correctly. Uh, we'll say all of that in the instructions. So you don't have to remember it, but just, uh, I'm just pointing it out. Questions? So the diagram you Yeah. Uh, yes, so just turn in place. So imagine that it's kind of aligned like this, uh, and you just want it to, to turn yeah, just in place. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a top-down view, so really it's like turning in place like this. Good. Other questions? Go ahead. The reason why it just works is if you're Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yep, 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 yep. Good question. Just clarify the direction the propeller is going. That's yes. the same direction as. Uh, it's actually the opposite direction, but you don't have to worry like too much about which direction the. Uh, well, at least for, for figuring out the motion, uh, what's important is the direction of the, the moment. Uh, so what I'm drawing here, you can think of as just corresponding to the, the direction of the moment, uh, but it's the the opposite uh, direction of the, the propeller motion. Okay. All right. So. So yeah, that's the the motor model for the. Um, the three-dimensional uh, quad rotor. So it's just slightly more complicated than the, the planar one. Uh, 
so the next thing I want to do is just give a sketch of the, the full equations of motion for the, the 3D uh, quarter order. Uh, and again, I'll just mention that since we have uh, a pretty kind of broad set of uh, backgrounds, so uh, students from MAE, computer science, RP, EC, and so on. Uh, if you're an MAE student, then this is something you should be able to do because we've done it in, in MAE 206, is to derive the equation of motion for the, the 3D quarter order. Um, yeah, if you're not an MAE, I guess the, the point here uh, is just to give you a sense for what the equations look like uh, and also their physical uh, meaning uh, and their general form. So the, the general form, if you recall from the, the previous lecture, um, for equations of, of motion in, in general, uh, is x dot equals uh, f of x u, uh, where x is the, the state vector, uh, which for the 3D quarter order uh, I wrote down over here, this is this 12 dimensional thing. Uh, usually we think of the state vector as a column vector just by convention, so that's why I have the little uh, transpose over here. Uh, the same thing with the uh, control input vector, usually we think of it as a, as a column vector. It's just more compact, right, it is a row, and then put a, a transpose. Um, so yeah, this is the, the general form of equations of motion for not just the, the quad rotor, but for other mechanical uh, systems as well. Uh, you'll have a chance to kind of go through and just type out some parts of the equations of motion for the, the 3D quad in the, the assignment that's going to go out uh, tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I just want to give you a sketch for, for what they look like. So uh, the first thing we'll do is just define um, a vector uh, which we can call uh, R. Uh, again, the, the bar uh, above any variable denotes that it's a, it's a vector. Uh, this is just the position. The, the center of mass, so this is a, a three-dimensional vector, uh, x, y, z. Um, so r dot is the velocity of the center of mass, so x dot, y dot, uh, z dot. Um, so we can then use Newton's uh, second law, so f equals ma, um, to write down an expression for r uh, double dot, so that's f divided by m, the total uh, forces acting on the, uh, the system uh, divided by the, the mass. Um, so there's basically two kinds of forces or two sources of, of forces uh, that are acting on the, the drone. Uh, so one is the force of uh, gravity. Um, so uh, the force divided by m is just 0, 0 uh, minus g. Uh, so minus because uh, it's acting in the, the negative uh, z uh, direction. Uh, and then the, the second one or well, the second kind of source of, uh, of forces, this comes from the, the propeller. Um, so uh, the propeller forces, the thrust forces, um, are always acting in the, the BZ direction, right? So BZ again is just uh, perpendicular to the, the plane of the drone, so no matter what, orientation that the drone is in, the propellers are always producing a thrust that's perpendicular to that uh, plane, uh, so always aligned with the, the BZ direction. Uh, so that's what this is, so F total, uh, if you recall uh, this from here, is the total force uh, from the propellers. Uh, we're just dividing that by M because we're doing A equals F over M question. Yes, yeah, yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna get to that. Uh, so this uh, vector is expressed in the, the body frame. Uh, right, so the, the frame that's uh, attached to the, the body of the drone, the, the B-frame uh, that I drew over here. Uh, so this R uh, is a matrix, so it's a 3 by 3 uh, rotation matrix um, that takes a vector uh, that's expressed in the, the body frame uh, and just changes that to a vector expressed in the, the world frame. Uh, specifically R, maybe I'll just make it a bit more explicit here. Uh, so this R uh, depends on the, the orientation of the, the drone. So it depends on phi 
uh, theater and, and side. Um, the specific kind of rotation matrix, uh, so I won't write it down here, but you'll see it uh, written out uh, fully in the, uh, the first uh, assignment. But yeah, you can just think of it as, as some rotation matrix, something that takes a vector expressed in the, the body frame, changes it to a, a vector in the, the world frame. Does that make sense? Oh, sorry, in the, the world frame, the, the inertial frame, uh, the frame of reference that's attached to the, uh, the, the room that the drone is flying in. Okay, questions on, on this part? All right, I'll leave that up there because we'll refer back to it. I'm just gonna erase this. All right, so that's kind of the, the first uh, part of the, the equation of the motion that tells you, uh, that gives you equation of the motion for the translation of the center of mass. Um, the second part has to do with the orientations. Uh, so for this, we're gonna define another vector uh, that I'm gonna call omega and just subscript it with bw. Uh, so the bw uh, means that this is the angular velocity vector. Let me just write down what this actually is. So it's just pqr, so it's the last three components of the, the state vector, the angular velocity vector. Uh, so bw, uh, that subscript is just reminding us that this is the angular velocity of the body frame, so the B frame relative to the, the world frame. World, again, is the same as inertial frame. Um, okay, so then, as I uh, kind of mentioned briefly, there's a relationship between the Euler angle rates, so the time derivatives of the, the Euler angles, um, so phi dot, theta dot, and psi dot. Uh, so there's a relationship between the, uh, the Euler angle rates uh, and the angular uh, velocity vector. Um, again, I won't write it down fully, I just want to give you a, a sketch for what these equations look like. Um, but you can basically go from one to the other using a, a matrix uh, multiplication. Um, so PQR, that's the angular velocity vector. Uh, if you multiply that by a three by three matrix, um, so I'll write down just maybe a couple of terms. Uh, so it's one, one, uh, the one, one element is this one. And we have sine uh, phi tan theta, um, and then cosine phi uh, tan theta. So that's the, the first row, um, and then there's uh, two, more, uh, two more rows, this is a, a three by three matrix. Um, and again, the, the specific form of the, the elements, uh, you'll see written out fully in the, the first assignment. Uh, but this matrix that relates the angular velocity vector uh, to the Euler angle rates uh, has to do, or depends on uh, the Euler angles themselves. Uh, just one kind of point I'll make here, the specific like elements that show up, like the, the trigonometric like, expressions that you, that you get in this matrix, uh, it depends on the uh, choice of Euler angle convention that you use. Uh, so again, it's super important, as I tried to emphasize in the previous lecture, uh, to make sure uh, you know what convention you're using, uh, and then you can either derive or typically then look up uh, what this uh, matrix uh, is, like what the, the specific expressions are. All right, so that's, that's uh, one uh, part, like the penultimate part of the equation of the motion. And then the final part uh, tells us the rate of change of the angular velocity vector. So omega uh, dot, so omega vw dot, um, equals, let me just write it down and then I'll explain.
All right, so this, uh, I guess everything here is, is familiar except for uh, this uh, quantity i with a, a kind of weird uh, uh, calligraphy here. Uh, so i is the inertia matrix. Uh, with three uh, diagonal elements. Uh, so similar to the uh, planar quadrotor equation, equations that we saw in the previous lecture, uh, there we just had a scalar <laughs> corresponding to the, the moment of inertia of the drone. Uh, here we have a, a matrix, a three by three matrix. Uh, and the specific values of these uh, elements uh, depends on the, the geometry of the drone and the, the mass like, distribution of the drone. Um, so if you have a CAD model, for instance, of the drone, an accurate CAD model, and the CAD software will give you the moments of inertia, uh, you can also do some uh, physical experiments uh, to estimate what the, the moments of inertia are. All right, so that's pretty much it in terms of uh, equations of motion. Um, Again, if, you're, if you have IMAE background and you've seen this before, hopefully it's, it's kind of uh, familiar. Uh, if not, uh, the main thing I want to emphasize, uh, really like two things. One is that that's the state vector, right? that 12 dimensional vector over there. This is the control input vector. Uh, and the equations that we've written down, uh, so these equations over here, and these equations over here, uh, these equations over here, uh, you can combine them uh, to get equations in this general form. Um, so this is a 12-dimensional vector, like a state dot equals something, uh, and that something on the right-hand side uh, are exactly the, the things that we've uh, written down uh, over here, uh, here, uh, and over here. So that may or may not be obvious, maybe just from inspection, um, but it's, yeah, you, again, you'll see these equations written down in the assignment. Uh, I would encourage, if you haven't seen this before, to just go through and double check uh, that you can write these equations uh, in this general kind of first order uh, differential equation. So, yeah, I guess questions on, on that. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yes. Exactly, yeah. And, and Yes, and that some amount uh, has to do with the, the orientation of the drone. Uh, so the Euler angles, like the, the phi theta psi, um, so from our previous discussion in the, in the last lecture, uh, that allows us to specify the, the orientation of the drone. Uh, and all that uh, three by three rotation matrix is doing is taking a vector uh, that's expressed in the, the frame of the, the body, the, uh, the drone's frame, and just rotating that to the, the inertial reference uh, frame. Yeah. That's sort of like the field on the left. Uh, this part. Uh, or that's that's yeah, right. Uh, yeah, these are are the uh, rates of the Euler angles. Okay, um, so that's like kind of how much Yes, exactly. Yep. Rotating. Yeah. So does it make a lot of sense the differential yeah. our Euler angles? Yeah. So Ah, okay, okay, so uh, let me just be slightly careful here. Um, so the rotation matrix is this matrix over here. Uh, so that's the one I was saying that you take a, a vector uh, in the, the body frame and that translates it to a, a vector in the, the inertial reference frame. Uh, the gravity, for instance, is like already expressed in the, the inertial reference frame. Uh, so this vector, uh, sorry, this three by three matrix uh, is not a rotation uh, matrix. So this is just some other matrix uh, that's not the same as that. Uh, the kind of role of this matrix is to relate the Euler angle rates, so how quickly kind of is the, the drone rotating, uh, relate that to the angular velocity vector, uh, which is the, the PQR. Uh, and yeah, I guess the reason this is uh, useful is if we write down, if we try to write down the equations of motion in that general form, x dot equals f of xu. Uh, the fourth, fifth, and sixth components of that x dot are exactly phi dot, uh, theta dot, psi dot. 
Uh, and these equations here are allowing us to write down phi dot, theta dot, psi dot uh, in terms of uh, some components of that state vector. Uh, and specifically, the components are the Euler angles, phi theta psi, uh, and the last three components, uh, PQR. Does that make sense? Okay, good, good. Yeah, so you can basically go through each kind of uh, three, each of these three, so x, y, z dot uh, is just x dot, y dot, z dot, so the, the uh, I guess, seventh, eighth, and ninth component of the state. Um, phi dot, theta dot, psi dot, that's the one we were just going over. Uh, that's given by these equations over here. Uh, x uh, double dot, y double dot, z double dot, uh, that is given by this, uh, because r double dot is, is exactly uh, x double dot, y double dot, z double dot. Uh, and finally, p dot, q dot, r dot, so that's omega dot, and that's given by these equations. If you just concatenate uh, each of these uh, components, uh, you'll get equations in that general form. Good. Other questions? Go ahead. About the body frame. Yes. The body frame rotates. Yes. Uh, does it relate to the uh, principle? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So um, I am assuming here, so I didn't go into the, the details. Uh, I'm assuming that the uh, body frame directions are uh, aligned with the, the principal axes of the, the drone. Uh, so principal axes um, basically will allow you to diagonalize the inertia matrix. Uh, here, just by choice, so I just chose the, the three directions to be uh, principal axes because I'm saying the x direction is forward, the y direction is, is left, z is up. Um, so just by kind of construction or, or by choice, uh, they are uh, principal axis frames. Uh, and so you get a diagonal inertia matrix. In general, uh, maybe I can just be yeah, slightly more general. These may not be zeros. Uh, you might have some non-zero like elements there if you don't choose the uh, body frame carefully. Yeah, good question. Other questions? Okay. All right. So, yeah, we can write down the, the equations of motion. They look slightly complicated, but hopefully not too uh, complicated. Right, and the, I guess the reason we're doing this, again, is to, to build up towards uh, feedback control, so developing techniques to uh, correct for deviations uh, that the, the drone might have from its hover uh, target -like configuration. Uh, the next step towards that is going to be to take these equations, which are nonlinear, right? So it has uh, like these trigonometric -like functions of the state, for instance. Uh, there's a, a bunch of nonlinearities. Um, to get to the, the feedback control part, uh, we're going to uh, take these nonlinear equations and come up with a linear approximation of them. Uh, so I'm not going to do it for the, the 3D quad rotor, uh, because those equations are complicated, so I'll tell you how we will do it for the, the 3D quad. Um, but for now, we're just going to go through the exercise of taking nonlinear dynamics for the planar quad rotor, which we wrote down in the last lecture, and then coming up with linear approximations of them, which will then uh, basically allow us to, to do some feedback control. So. Let me go through that process. So, yeah, so from the previous lecture, uh, so again, this is just, we're going to use the, the planar quad now as our uh, example. So from the previous lecture, we wrote down the equations of motion for the planar quadrotor in this general form, x dot equals f of x and u. And I'll just remind you the specific form of, of those equations. So x dot is d over dt of x, the state vector, which was x, y, uh, theta, uh, x dot, y dot, theta dot, equals 
X dot, Y dot, theta dot, uh, and then minus U1 over M sine theta, and then positive U1 over M cosine theta minus G, uh, and then U2 divided by I. Uh, and just as a, a reminder, uh, U1 is the total thrust from the propellers. So it's the summation of these two uh, quantities, F1 plus F2. Uh, and then U2 is the total moment. From the propellers. Uh, and we're treating these as our uh, control inputs. Okay, so this was just exactly what we did in the, the previous lecture. Um, what I want to do is take these equations of motion, uh, which are nonlinear, right? So it has the, the sine and cosine, for instance. Uh, well, I guess those are the, the only uh, nonlinearities. Uh, and we're going to come up with a, a linear approximation of these, which again will then allow us to, to do some uh, feedback control. So, um, yeah, we have these equations in this form. F is, is the nonlinear function of x, the, the state vector. Um, so, to come up with some linear approximation of these uh, dynamics, uh, we need to find some point. Uh, so some state uh, and some control input uh, about which we do the linear approximation. Right, so if we have some nonlinear function just in one variable, something like this, uh, we can choose some particular point, let's say this one, and then we can say, all right, I'm going to find some linear approximation of it that's going to be a reasonably accurate representation of that function just around that nominal point, that reference point. Um, so since we're interested in controlling the drone, uh, just to make it hover, uh, we're going to choose the hover configuration as our kind of reference point uh, about which we do the linearization. So we're going to call that uh, reference point uh, x subscript 0. Um, so the first two components correspond to the desired uh, location of the, the drone. Uh, we can just take these to be zero, right, just by shifting the origin of our reference frame. Uh, so without any loss of uh, generality, uh, we can choose uh, x0 equals y0 equals 0, uh, just to make our lives uh, a little bit easier. Uh, the other uh, variables, uh, the other components of the state uh, are 0, because again, we're looking at the, the Howard configuration. So when the drone is uh, in uh, the Howard configuration, the orientation is 0. So that's the third uh, component. Uh, and then x dot, y dot, theta dot, uh, those are uh, 0 as well, because uh, we're saying that the drone is not moving. Uh, when it's at, at hover. Um, the other part, so we've chosen some nominal like reference points uh, for the, the state about which we're going to do the linearization. Uh, we also have to choose some reference point for the control input vector. So we're going to call 
that u0 with a bar again. Um, so yeah, I guess can someone figure out uh, or maybe guess what uh, we should try to choose that uh, reference point to be? Again, if we're just interested in making the drone hover. Go ahead. Yes, exactly. So the, the force, we need to keep it afloat. Uh, so that's the, the first component, right? U1 is the total thrust from the, the propellers. Uh, so that's just M times G, uh, the mass of the drone, uh, times uh, the gravitational constant. Uh, and then the second component, uh, which is the, the total moment, we're just going to choose that to be zero. Uh, so we don't want the, uh, the drone to, to have any moment. Uh, when we're when it's exactly at the, the hovering uh, configuration. All right, so, uh, so yeah, this is U1, the nominal like reference point, uh, and U2, uh, total thrust and, and total uh, moment. I guess does that make sense? Any any questions on why we chose this specific values for the uh, state and then these for the control input? Okay, so yeah, let's go about go ahead and, and try to uh, linearize those nonlinear dynamics, these nonlinear dynamics um, about this reference point. So I guess the, the first thing to note uh, is that so if we look at uh, f of x zero u uh, zero, uh, this is the the zero uh, vector, right? So if I plug in uh, some x0, uh, let's, again, just to keep it simple, let's just say x0 and, and y0 are, are 0, it doesn't matter here. Um, and then we plug in this uh, uh, control input, this reference control input, uh, then you can check, right, so you can plug in uh, the nominal, like the reference state, the reference control input over here, uh, and you'll see that it's exactly 0. Um, so we can kind of quickly check that. So x dot, y dot, theta dot, those are like the last three components over here, so those are zero, just by choice. Uh, since we're saying theta is zero, so sine of theta is zero, that zero dot this component. Uh, the last component, uh, u2, we're saying is zero, so that zero dot this component. Uh, the only remaining one is, is over here. Uh, so u1 over m cosine theta minus g, uh, cosine of zero is, is one. Um, u1, we're choosing to be uh, mg. So we have mg divided by m, which is g uh, minus uh, g over here, right? So, so that's, that's zero as well. So all of the, uh, the equations, uh, so all of the expressions on the right-hand side over here uh, evaluate to zero. So I guess what does this mean intuitively? So we're saying that if we're already, or if the drone is already at the hovering configuration at this reference like nominal uh, state, uh, and if you apply uh, this control input u0, which we chose to be this, uh, then nothing is going to change, right? Uh, so the drone is going to be, remain uh, exactly as is, uh, and that's what we want. So if the drone is already hovering exactly where we want it to hover, then do nothing, right? Uh, just uh, don't, don't, or do nothing in the sense of, like, don't make the drone move away from that configuration. You still have to do something, I guess, to do nothing, in the sense that you have to, the propellers have to counteract the, the force of gravity, uh, but if you can't write the force of gravity, then the drone uh, will not do anything in the sense that it's not going to move around. Okay, so that's, that's just kind of a, an observation here. Uh, so let's go ahead and linearize the dynamics. Um, so yeah, I guess what we're going to do is start off in that, with that general form. So x dot uh, equals f of x and, and u. Uh, and we're going to just do a first order uh, Taylor series uh, approximation uh, of f. Uh, so first order Taylor series approximation of the dynamics. Um, so this is uh, approximately equal to uh, f. So I guess this is something from your multivariate uh, calculus course. I guess hopefully everyone has seen 
uh, Taylor TV approximations. Uh, so we have f. We evaluate the function f at the point about which we're doing the linearization. So that's uh, x0, uh, u0, uh, plus uh, a matrix uh, of partial uh, derivatives. So I'll write that as df dx uh, evaluated at x equals x0, u equals u0, so the reference points uh, multiplied by x minus uh, x0, and then plus uh, a matrix of partial derivatives with respect to the, the control input vector, so that's u. Again, evaluated at the reference point. Uh, u minus uh, u zero. Um, all right. I guess maybe just a quick show of hands. This does this make sense? Maybe just raise your hand if it does. I guess people are nodding. Maybe I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Good. Uh, <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is uh, this uh, a multivariate like Taylor series expansion. I'll write out exactly what these matrices are a bit more carefully. Uh, this term is zero, uh, as we uh, mentioned over here. So we just have uh, these two terms in our uh, Taylor series uh, expansion if we're just doing it up to, to first order. Okay, so let's write down. Um, I won't erase that because we're going to need it. I'll just erase this. So yeah, for the, the planar quarter specifically, uh, these equations are not like too messy, so we can actually uh, write down exactly what these uh, matrices are. Uh, and I'll just give these names. So this matrix, um, I'm going to call it A, so this matrix of partial derivatives when you evaluate it uh, at the nominal state and control input, uh, this one I'll call B. Uh, so let's see what A is. So this matrix of, of partial derivatives, um, we're going to look at each component of f. So we've written down what f is explicitly over here. We're going to look at each component uh, and take partial derivatives with respect to each component of the state. Right? So the, the first row uh, is going to be d uh, x dot uh, d x. So it's the first component of f, uh, the partial derivative, uh, with respect to the first component of x, the, the state vector. And then dx dot uh, dy, and dx dot d theta, uh, and then the other components of dx dot dx dot, uh, dx dot dy, dx dot d theta. So that's the, the first row. Uh, the second row, we're going to look at the second component of f. And so that's y dot. We're going to take partials with respect to, again, each component of the state vector. So again, I'll just write this one down explicitly. So d, sorry, y dot dx dy dot dy uh, y dot d theta Uh, and yeah, I guess and so on. So the third component is partial of theta dot with respect to each uh, component of the, the state. Um, maybe, all right, let me write that, that one down as well. And then I, I won't write all of them. Kind of look all the same. Uh, I'll just write down the, the fourth uh, component because that's, that looks slightly different. Uh, or the fourth row, I should say. 
So that's the partial uh, of the fourth element over here of, of f. So that's this minus u1 over m sine theta. The partial of that with respect to x, and then the partial of that um, be careful with the parentheses here with respect to y and and so on. All right, so hopefully the, the general pattern is, is clear. Um, we're just taking the, the, the partial of each component of f with each component of, of the, the state vector. Uh, this looks super messy, maybe. Uh, well, at least the way I've written it with my handwriting, it, it looks messy. Uh, but it turns out it's actually quite neat, like when you evaluate uh, these expressions. So ultimately, we're going to evaluate these uh, at x equals x0 uh, and u equals uh, u0. So maybe let's just look at the, the first row first. I'm going to. Yeah, I think I can erase this. Yes, yeah, so I guess can someone see maybe what the first row uh, ends up being? All right, maybe let's just look at the first. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You were going to say. Uh, all zeros for the first row. So this one is zero. So the, yeah, uh, the fourth one, uh, this one over here. Uh, so yeah, maybe let's just go, them, go through them one by one. So, so we're taking the partial of x dot with respect to x. So that's zero. Uh, right, so x dot doesn't have... Uh, any uh, anything that involves x directly, so this this term is zero. Uh, the partial of x dot with respect to y is, is zero. The partial of x dot with respect to theta is zero. Uh, the fourth one is the one that's interesting, so that's or at least not trivial. So the the partial of x dot with respect to itself, right? So the partial of any variable with respect to itself is is just one, and then the other ones are uh, zero as well. So partial of x dot with respect to y dot, partial of x dot uh, with respect to, to theta dot. Right, so these are partial, like not total derivatives, so that's why everything ends up being zero except for this fourth element over here. Uh, does that make sense? I guess questions on that? Yes, go ahead. Uh, the, why is the third one zero? Yeah. Uh, so the third one is uh, the, the partial of x dot uh, with respect to, to theta, um, right? So like theta doesn't e appear explicitly in like this uh, expression x dot. So we're thinking of x dot as like a variable like in its own right. So it's the fourth, or sorry, the, the first, um, sorry, the, the fourth component of the, uh, the state uh, vector, uh, right? So we're taking the partial of this variable x dot with respect to theta. Uh, x dot, uh, that expression like doesn't involve theta. That's it. Um, not in x dot, right? So uh, in x double dot, yes. So this is d over dt uh, of x dot. Uh, so in x double dot, so we'll, yeah, we'll get to some terms uh, where x double dots appear, uh, and that's where we get, get things that are non-zero. Uh, here it's just x dot. All right, other questions on this? Okay, so we can look at the second and third rows and, and kind of uh, come to a similar conclusion. So this is going to be all zeros again, the second row, uh, except for the fifth element. So that's partial of y dot with respect to y dot. So I'll just write that down. Uh, and then the third row, similar idea, everything is zero, uh, except for the, the sixth element, the last one partial of theta dot with respect to theta dot. Okay. So it turns out if you, so if you go through uh, all the, the elements, uh, they're actually all zero uh, except for one. So this is the one that's going to be non-zero. 
but everything else just happens to be zero. Um, so maybe we can just look at that one. Uh, you can verify the, the zeros maybe just on your own offline. Uh, so let's just verify uh, the, the only one that I'm claiming is, is non-zero. Uh, so that's in the fourth row, the one, two, three, four. Uh, and it's the, the third uh, component, uh, the third element in there, the fourth row. Uh, so the fourth row, we're looking at the, the partial of the fourth row of F. So that's partial. Of uh, so sorry minus u one over m sine theta uh, the partial of that with respect to uh, the third element which is uh, theta uh, and then we're evaluating this at the reference state and the reference uh, control input um, so uh, we have minus u1 over m, so that doesn't depend on, on theta. Uh, the partial of sine theta with respect to theta is cosine theta. Um, and then we're plugging in uh, this nominal uh, state and, and control input. Uh, so that state, uh, so we get cosine of 0, uh, which is 1. So we end up with minus u1 over m, uh, and then u1, okay, I guess I erased it, uh, but u1, we said we're, we were going to choose just to counteract gravity, so mg, um, so we have minus mg divided by m, uh, which is minus uh, g. So that's the, the only non-zero element over here, so we just end up with a minus uh, g over here. I guess any questions on this calculation? Okay, so that's the, uh, the first matrix. Uh, so when we take the partials uh, with respect to uh, the state, uh, we can go and kind of do the, the same thing for the control input. So I won't go through it in, in that detail. I'll just tell you what it ends up being. So the B matrix, uh, that was the, the partials of F with respect to the U. Uh, so it's a similar kind of idea. So we look at each component of F and then take the partials with respect to each component of U. So dx dot the U1, uh, dx dot uh, the U2, and then the Y dot du1, dy dot, uh, du2, uh, and so on. Right, so we have six of these rows. Uh, so this is a six by two uh, matrix. Uh, again, this ends up being mostly zeros. Uh, just a couple of uh, non-zero elements. So all of the first four rows end up being zero. Uh, and then we have one over m zero, and then zero, uh, one over i. Um, yeah, so this might be a useful exercise just to go back and compute these partial derivatives, see that most of them are zero. And then you'll see that the, the only two that are non-zero are uh, these ones uh, over here. OK, so just to, I guess, summarize. Uh, so we have these two matrices that we computed, uh, taking the partial derivatives, evaluating them at the point about which we are linearizing. Um, and so the, the kind of final result of that uh, is that we can write down the, or at least approximate the original equations, which have this form. Uh, x dot equals f of x and u. We can approximate that as this A matrix, which I just erased right now, times x minus 
uh, x naught plus the b matrix, uh, which is what uh, I wrote over there, uh, u minus uh, u zero. Um, and yeah, this is our this is going to be our linear, really affine. Uh, so we have these constant uh, terms over here, uh, but it's linear in the, the state and the, the control input. Um, this is going to be our approximation uh, that we use uh, when we talk about feedback control. Um, all right, I guess questions on this linearization process? Yes. So I guess this approximation is yeah. not just used for calculating the power state. You already know, like, it's plugging like a. Uh, yeah. Network. Yes. It's more for like other, like, yes. more general. Exactly, yeah. So, so the reason this is going to be helpful. Uh, is when we think about the motion when the drone is not already perfectly hovering. Uh, so the drone is like truly like perfectly hovering, uh, then everything is easy. You just apply the uh, control input, uh, which was to account for gravity and no uh, torque. Um, but these equations, well, the original equations here, and then these, these approximations, uh, linear approximations, uh, help us understand the motion when you're not exactly at hover, so if you're just slightly far away. Uh, the goal is going to be to get to the hover configuration, uh, and that's where these equations are uh, are useful. All right, other questions on this uh, linearization process? Um. So uh, x naught is not its own. Uh, so the x naught vector, uh, which I guess I'm sorry, I erased, uh, but that was the one where it's all all zeros. Uh, uh, that one uh, is not its own variable. Like that's the the reference point uh, for the state about which we're doing the linear approximation. Um, yeah, I think was it x dot? Is that what you meant, or or not? Uh, yeah. So x dot. So when we looked at uh, for instance, the, the partial of x dot with respect to something like uh, x or, or y or theta. Um, so we're thinking of x dot as its kind of own variable uh, because uh, it is its own variable in the state, right? So this uh, over here, uh, this like six dimensional vector, like without the, the time derivative, uh, time derivative uh, that's our state vector. Uh, each component of this is some component of the state. So like one, two, three, the first three components, and the, the fourth, fifth, and sixth components. Um, yeah, each of these elements you can think of as some like, element of the state vector, just as its own uh, variable. Um, so that's why like dx dot dx, uh, for instance, was equal to zero. Uh, and then I think maybe you were asking uh, why x double dot is not its own variable, uh, because it doesn't appear in the state uh, vector, uh, right? So the, the only variables are, are the ones that I've written down over here. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, other questions? Okay, so, so yeah, let's leave the kind of dynamics part uh, here for now. Um, I'll just make a couple of comments, I guess. Uh, so the first one is that, so we did this by hand, like pretty much, like the linearization for the, the planar quarter order. Uh, the equations were not super messy, right? Uh, so we can write, down, write them down relatively compactly. Um, you could imagine doing this by hand for the 3D quad order, uh, but it's going to be really messy, right? So there's a lot of partial derivatives you need to calculate. Uh, there's a bunch of like matrix multiplications. Uh, the trigonometric expressions that show up in those equations are, are also com complicated. So it's definitely not something you would want to do by hand. You can try it out, maybe just like one element of the A matrix, one element of the B matrix, and see how far you get. Um, so in practice, what we're going to do is use Python. Uh, so we're going to uh, use the symbolic uh, kind of functionality of, of Python uh, to write down these expressions. Uh, and then Python will basically give us the linear approximation, uh, the A and B matrices. Um, having said that, I think it's really good to understand how this process works. Um, so I would recommend just going through this, this process for the, the planar quarter order. I think maybe we have one more exercise where you uh, just by hand uh, linearize some dynamics. Uh, but once you've understood like, how it works in principle, 
uh, when the expressions get too complicated, you don't want to be doing this by hand. So that's where uh, Python is useful, and, and you'll see an example of that uh, in the, the assignment that goes out uh, tomorrow. OK, so yeah, we have these nonlinear dynamics. We came up with these linear approximations. Uh, the goal, uh, as I mentioned, is to really do feedback control. In the last, uh, I guess, 10 minutes or so, I just want to start the, the discussion of, of feedback control, and we'll, we'll say much more about it in the, the next uh, lecture. Um, So I guess one way to, to think about feedback control uh, is in terms of the sense, think, and act cycle uh, that I mentioned in the, the very first uh, lecture. Um, so the way yeah, it's going to work is that the, the robot is going to sense its state. Uh, so whatever its state vector is, six-dimensional for the planar quarter order, um, at some time t. So we're going to call that x of t. So just imagine that the robot has some sensors that instantaneously uh, tell it what the, the state is. Um, so we're going to compare that with the desired state. which, if we're thinking about hover, is our x naught. Um, and then we're going to choose some control input uh, based on the difference uh, between the, the state at time t and the, the state that we actually uh, want to be at. Uh, so again, if we're thinking about hover, so let's say we're, we want the drone to hover like at some point over, over here, but the drone is actually here. Uh, we're saying that the, the drone has some sensors that allow it to measure its state, uh, so it knows it's not exactly at the configuration at the point that we want it to be. So the, the y is, is higher. Uh, so the drone is going to look at where it actually is, where it wants to be, uh, and then it's going to choose some control inputs uh, that try to get it to, to where it actually wants to be. So in this case, it might be just lower the propeller speeds, right? So just go down uh, a little bit. Uh, and this cycle repeats. Uh, so at every point in time, or at least quickly enough, the drone looks at where it is, where it wants to be, uh, and chooses some control input. So for a drone, and the cycle uh, typically happens at about 500 hertz. So 500 times a second, it looks at the state uh, and can compute some uh, control input. So I guess a little bit more formally. Uh, what we want to do with the feedback control uh, is find what's known as a feedback controller, or maybe just controller, or control law. It goes by a bunch of different names. Uh, so this is a, a function. Uh, so u uh, as a function of x uh, that instantiates this uh, kind of sense uh, think act cycle that I drew uh, over here. Uh, so I'll write down just one kind of canonical form uh, for, for what the feedback controller or control law uh, might look like. So for example, Uh, we could choose u uh, as a function of x. 
have to be u naught, so the nominal uh, control input, plus some matrix, which I'll call k, uh, times x minus x0. This is a, a matrix. Um, so this is just an example. So basically what this is saying is, if x is equal to x0, so if your state is at the desired state, so if you're already exactly at hover, then this part is just zero. Uh, and so we're only applying the, the reference control input, which keeps us at the hovering configuration. Uh, if the state is not equal to the, the desired state, so if your drone is somewhere else, uh, then do something extra, which is given by this term over here, uh, in addition to the, the reference, like the nominal control input. Uh, so of course, the, the whole kind of game here with feedback control is to find what this extra part is, like what should this matrix be, for instance, or like why did we choose this specific form uh, for the, the additional uh, component. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the, the next lecture. So feedback control gives us a principal kind of set of tools uh, to come up with these uh, equations. So I think we have maybe just the last two minutes. Uh, I just want to end with a, a final question, uh, which is like, what is the, the point of feedback control? Like, why do we uh, need it? Like, why do we need to do the sense, think, act uh, cycle? Um, and the, the reason is basically to deal with uncertainty. Uh, so by implementing this, this sense, think, act cycle, uh, or this feedback controller, uh, we can deal with some different forms of uncertainty. Uh, so maybe just someone want to say what kind of uncertainty might feedback control help with? Okay, perfect. Yeah, so for instance, uh, a gust of wind. Uh, so some external disturbance just comes and blows you away from your hover configuration, then you want to somehow counteract that uh, and come back to, to being uh, where you want to be. I guess other thoughts on... Uh, what do you mean? Maybe the imprecision of the sensing device? Yeah, so maybe some sensing uncertainty. Uh, other thoughts? Good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so there's some model uncertainty. So maybe you don't measure the the length of the arm or the inertia matrix exactly. Uh, so that's something that potentially this could uh, counteract. I guess other ones? So there's, oh, go ahead, yes. Yeah, so hardware, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good one as well. That's actually one that's pretty tricky to handle in practice. So for instance, like a propeller just stops working, right? So in principle, feedback control could help you do that. Uh, but but it can be uh, challenging. Uh, there's one more, which is actually, in some sense, the most direct uh, application, which is just uncertainty in the initial <coughs> conditions of the, the drone. So if you start off your drone uh, in some initial con condition that's not already the hover configuration, right? You want to get to the hover configuration, and you don't know maybe exactly where someone will like place the, the drone. Uh, so that's another kind of uncertainty that feedback control uh, allows you to handle. That's kind of implicit in the gust of wind. So the gust of wind comes and blows you, takes you somewhere else. Uh, you can think of that as the initial condition and you want to get back. All right, so yeah, we'll, we'll say much more about feedback control and how to find these controllers in the, the next lecture. So I'll see you on Thursday.